Right, we have a quorum. We've reached the appointed hour. Um, several members uh, have their meeting sessions clashed. I'm one of them. Um, this is uh, the uh, meeting this sub a proposed committee on the uh, shipping legislation to show of smoke emission amendment bill 2014. The rules for the election of the chairman is uh, according to the rules of procedures, or rather House rules, Annex 4, and we need a member to nominate and then a member to second uh, the candidate. I nominate Mr. Kenneth, uh, Dr. Kenneth Chen. Is there any second there? Mrs. Sin Chung Kai. Uh, Dr. Kenneth Chen, do you accept the um, um, nomination? Yes, I do. We, we don't have enough people. In fact, um, Dr. Kenneth Chen is elected the convener of the Bills Committee. Thank you, members. Do you need a uh, vice chairman? This is a relatively simple amendment bill. This is the Shipping Legislation Control of Smoke Emission Amendment Bill 2014. Let us invite officials into the room and to explain to us the principles behind the amendment and also the details of the amendment. And then uh, we will discuss with members on our way forward. Good morning. If I may introduce the government officials, and they are uh, Mr. Chung Siu Man, Assistant Director of the Marine Department, Ms. Jenny Chen, PAS, Transport and Housing Bureau, Mr. Chu Hun Chim, Assistant Secretary, Transport and Housing Bureau, uh, and also uh, Ms. Cindy Chuck. The government Council, the Department of Justice. Right. So, um, the government officials, would you please introduce the um, amendment bill, its background, and also the uh, content of the amendment. Thank you, Chairman. The purpose of the bill is to improve um, the provisions on control of smoke emission. We want to set an objective law enforcement standard. Uh, uh, any uh, vessel uh, in Hong Kong should not emit smoke that cause uh, nuisance. And that's in the law, but there is no clear definition of a nuisance. Uh, there's a need to collect evidence and also um, insti uh, instigate pros uh, prosecution, but there are difficulties because of the lack of ob objective standard. We have made reference to uh, the approach used by the UK and US ports in uh, dealing with the situation, and they make, made reference to the Rickleman chart. We therefore amend the law, uh, stating that if a dark smoke uh, emitted by ships or vessels uh, that are darker than or as dark as or darker than shade two of the Rickleman scale. For a period of no uh, of three minutes or more than is in breach of law, we also enhance the penalty. Uh, first offense from uh, ten thousand dollars to twenty five thousand dollars, and subsequent offenses from twenty five uh, twenty thousand dollars to uh, fifty thousand dollars. The amendment is to uh, reflect uh, the fact that the OGCs being uh, more um, uh, having a higher rate of power. I emit more uh, smoke. That's introduction. Members may refer to the markup copy, which is CB four six one one thirteen fourteen uh, bracket o one. And earlier on, in fact, the legal advisor has also issued a document uh, raising questions. Concerning the details of the amendments, and the administration has also given a reply. Uh, members may refer to the um, papers CB four six one one thirteen fourteen bracket o two, which is the which um, is the uh, question 
paper, and then the reply is uh, CB 46111314 bracket 03, which is the reply. Okay, I open the floor to members and see whether members many uh, queries concerning the um, bill in respect of his background and also his details. And then we'll decide on whether we will invite uh, deputations and also how we proceed with the clause by clause study of the bill. Yes, Mr. Uh, Kenneth Lau. Thank you, Chairman. Um, in audit report uh, meeting, uh, in the meeting of audit report number sixty, I attended the meeting. Uh, attended that meeting, which was on uh, air pollution, and this bill, to a certain extent, can address the issue of air pollution in Hong Kong. With regard to the policy principle or direction, I support that, of course. I have to a rather technical question. With regard to specified chart, one is the Riggleman chart, the other is the micro Riggleman chart. What are the differences? The second question is also technical. With regard to dark smoke emitted by vessels, is dark smoke directly related to the fuel used by the vessel? Yes, Mr. Chiu, thank you um, for the question. Concerning the first question, uh, this is the Ringelman chart, micro Ringelman chart. The Ringelman chart is as big as an A4 paper. There are no differences. Now, there is a distance between you and me. The lightest is shade 1, and the darkest is shade 4. And uh, how we use it? We use it to um, gauge the smoke and, and assess the color or shade of the smoke. Well, that's the uh, information on the Ringelman chart. As for dark smoke, dark smoke um, is emitted by engines in, in the vessels. Uh, there is um, fuel which is not fully combusted, and that is emitted um, as dark smoke, and there is no direct relation with this, uh, the, the uh, sulfur content. What are the particle particles in the dark smoke, and how do they affect our health? Well, in dark smoke, uh, there is an uh, there is a fuel which is not fully combusted, and there is uh, there are also carbon particles. Um, their impact on health. Um, maybe describe it this way, um, way um, say that will cause some uh, discomfort if you are very near to that dark smoke, the dark smoke. Uh, Mrs. Jun Kai, the technology uh, was uh, first founded a hundred odd years ago. Are there any modern version, modern versions of that? Do other countries adopt other methods uh, instead of the uh, using the Ringelman chart? May I thank Mr. Sin for this question? It's a pity that uh, in uh, our studies with regard to uh, regulation of dark smoke, there are only two ways. One traditional method is nuisance, uh, the causing of nuisance. And some ports use the uh, Ringelman chart as a benchmark. Uh, are there other ways? We have not seen that uh, in other parts of the world, and we are watching the development in this area. Law enforcement officers uh, have to watch um, the uh, dark smoke and assess the dark smoke. It's just like uh, the uh, dark smoke emission by ve uh, vehicles. 
um, is also by observation of the um, color and also quantity of the dark smoke. Uh, how can you uh, prove? How can you cite evidence in the court if you want to prosecute? Do you compare that with a chart um, that relies on the evidence adduced by the enforcement officers? We can shoot uh, videos and take pictures, and we can produce the videos and pictures as evidence. Most important of all, uh, it is the evidence provided by the law enforcement officer. In other parts of the world, do they really don't have any newer technology? You just rely on the nuisance definition or the Ringelman chart, and nothing more, or nothing else. Either you regulate the uh, output or the input. You regulate the output, i.e., the emission, the input, uh, the fuel. Uh, Mr. Sin, according to my understanding of your question, the regulation of emission is rather broad. As I have explained, uh, sulfur content, um, particulates, uh, nit um, NOx, or nit um, nitrogen oxides, um, they are responsible, they are within the responsibility of the um, EPD. Our approach is, is the oldest approach. Uh, there was no, uh, there was no such thing as say suspended particulates at that time. They were not visible. What I said earlier were not visible, but dark smoke is visible to the eyes of the public, and therefore we've retained this method of control, and we need to regulate uh, the emission. It's a pity that. Um, there is no new method, as far as I know, as far as dark smoke is concerned. Mr. Sin, this technology has been there for over 100 years, but it's first introduced in Hong Kong this time. Uh, yes, there, there is a professor called, uh, or there was a professor called uh, Rinkerman in Paris. I think that's the case. So there are still people using this technology. I'm not saying that I do not support it. But Mr. Chung said that he's not aware of other technologies. Should we send some people to make site visits around the world to see what kind of technologies are being used? Perhaps I can supplement. We use the Ringelmann chart and the EPD in regulating emission making vehicles. According to the law, they also rely on the Ringelmann chart. It is a very old system, but if it is effective, we can continue to use it. The Marines Department also approached Marine authorities overseas concerning the control of dark smoke. So we can treat it as a kind of nuisance and rely on visual assessment. Or, as Mr. Chung has said, we could rely on the Ringelmann chart, just like many ports in the United States and the UK. This is simple, easy to understand, and also enforceable. We will also pay attention to the EPD to see if there are more suitable ways to assess dark smoke and try to align our practices. We rely on the Ringelman chart in Hong Kong under the law. You're not answering my question. There are many ports around the world other than the UK. I don't want to uh, spell out all of them, such as New York. Many countries also have ports in Europe. How do they regulate emission of dark smoke? Anything to add? There are two questions. Let's see if the administration has anything to add. As long as they can answer my question. We just want to gather more information so that we can be more objective and compare our practices. I think this is the mainstream one around the world, according to their experience. If there are any new technologies, we have to continue 
to explore them. I'm not trying to answer on behalf of the administration, but when it comes to emission, we're talking about two things. For example, uh, the level of CO2, SO2, NOx in the emission, we're talking about limitation on the fuel. For example, ultra sulfur diesel has to be used in Hong Kong according to the law. So why is there dark smoke? It is about poor maintenance of the engines. For example, inside the cylinder, there's a lot of uh, erosion so that the combustion is not complete and there is unburned carbon or fuel, you see something black. So we're talking about two things. I agree with the administration that the EPD has already imposed the um, limitation on the input and now the Marines Department is going to rely on the shade of the smoke which may indicate poor maintenance and we can ask the operators to replace certain parts of their engines. We can of course also explore new technologies. Right now the EPT is subsidizing land means of transportation to have this selective converter. For the first converter, the government will pay for it and then they will use infrared detectors on the road to do the testing. If there is poor maintenance and there is dark smoke, you will be fined or you will be forced to have a thorough check. So concerning this infrared detector, we are detecting substances in the smoke. We already have that technology, but we're talking about two things. What fuel you're using and uh, that may lead to emission and the other one is emission caused by poor maintenance. I actually have a question. Uh, thank you, Ms. Ape, for the explanation. My question is about regulating the input and the output. Today we're talking about the output. I also understand the issue about efficiency. So my question is, I actually already asked it, but it's not yet answered. Around the world, what technologies are being used by countries with advanced technologies other than the Ringelmann chart? What about Northern Europe or in the EU? Are they also using Ringelmann chart? or Hamburg or Rotterdam, they use this one. Other ports are using that one, just tell me. Or are you saying that 90% of them are using a Ringelmann chart? Mr. Chung, according to your experience, can you tell us something? Of course, uh, we would like to get some supplementary papers so that we can understand more about comparable ports around the world in terms of enforcing the law to detect dark smoke. Mr. Chung, we have collected information and our conclusion is if I tell you there are no other technologies around the world, well, at this moment, I cannot be absolutely sure. So perhaps we can try and dig out some literature from around the world and see what kind of experience they may have. When we conduct researches or do comparative studies, we have not seen any other new technologies. And through our contacts with EPT and other ports, we have also not heard about other methods of regulating dark smoke other than relying on visual assessment. Mr. Ip, I would like to ask Mr. Chong. In Annex A, that is the legislation, I don't quite understand one thing. It is page 3.
section 50. A new bracket 2 is to be added. When a vessel emits dark smoke, in a situation that affects human safety or the safety of the vessel, the re requirement in bracket 1 will not be applicable to that emission. In other words, if you emit dark smoke at a level for 3 minutes beyond the Ringelmann chart, you will be exempted. I would like to ask why you have this provision. Can you tell us where you're talking about? Annex A, the bill, this one. Annex A, page 3, Chinese version. Do you see this? Section 50? Section 50, yes. If the dark smoke is darker than shade 2 on the chart for more than 3 minutes, you are not breaking the law. I would like to ask why this is added or amended. Well, can the government representative say something about this quickly now? We will look at it later on. Mr. Chong, thank you for the question. I would like to point out in the original version. With reasonable circumstances, it is not considered a crime. Subsection bracket 1 shall not apply to the emission of smoke in circumstances affecting the safety of life or of the vessel. We're just making it more clear. Uh, we are turning it into shall not apply to the emission of dark smoke in circumstances affecting the safety of life or of the vessel. The concept behind this amendment, for example, there is a vessel and it is about to collide with another vessel. In order to avoid the accident, it begins to move backward because the operation of the engine is suddenly reversed. It may lead to emission of dark smoke. In such circumstances, it will not be considered an offence. So emergencies with good grounds. It can be used as a type of defense. Any other questions from Mr. Ip? Mr. Alberho? Uh, um, I have some questions about this bill, but I think we can wait until clause by clause examination. So we have to support the inclusion of Ringelmann chart into the law to help you enforce the law. Can you tell us the flow of enforcement? I've been told that sometimes there are serious disputes with both parties presenting different stories. And there would be arguments with the frontline enforcement officers. Can you tell us what happens during enforcement? Well, there are two scenarios. First, we may receive a complaint. The second one involves our patrolling officer who detects such violations. I will first talk about the second scenario. The patrolling officer identifies dark smoke. Once the law is amended, they will be equipped with this Ringelman chart. When they see emission of dark smoke from vessels, if the vessel is emitting dark smoke at a shade that is darker than shade 2 for more than 3 minutes, this is an offence, as I have already mentioned. This is going to be the main testimony. They may also take pictures. 
or videos to assist the case. But this is not enough every single time. If the emission time is just three minutes by the time they take out their equipment, perhaps they cannot record emission of dark smoke for the entirety of three minutes. But they will record the process of emission of dark smoke and then all such evidence will be presented to the court for consideration. If the defendant would like to present his case, the judge will have to decide which side he believes in. For the first scenario, there will be a complainant. Then we will have to do two things. First of all, we'll have to go look at the vessel. If we see continuous emission, the same procedure will be triggered. But when the officer arrives at the scene and does not see emission, we have to talk to the complainant again and obtain evidence. We will provide a chart to him and ask for information. And then we will see if this person has objective environmental evidence, then we'll approach the owner of the vessel and other operators on board to collect evidence. We will combine everything to see if we have sufficient ground to um, have prosecution. Thank you. Well, I have this follow up question. Concerning the Ringelmann chart, there are no strong views. It is just about the grey areas in terms of enforcement. Uh, fishing vessels also have to be inspected. Um, minor inspection every year, uh, medium inspection every two years, and then um, overall inspection every four years. Um, but some fishermen don't know um, the Ringelmann chart, Ringelmann chart, and they don't know whether their emission is in breach of the law. I think you better distribute the Ringelman charts to them so that they can do their own inspection. Mr. Yik also has uh, his constituents, and I believe he also receives a lot of uh, telephone calls. So uh, can you help them to observe, uh, to comply with the law? Yes, we will continue to work on publicity and education. Uh, we thank him for the uh, thank the member for the advice. I thank Mr. Ho for raising this question. Uh, um, say, uh, I work for a company and it uh, owns the Star Ferry. You need to declare interest. Oh, there is no interest at all. Um, we uh, do receive complaints. Um, uh, people uh, see our vessels very often. Apart from checking the smoke with uh, Ringelman chart, you also uh, shoot videos or take pictures as evidence. Uh, but uh, the white balance or the uh, tone, or the, the color tone of the uh, cameras are, ve are very different. So um, you better agree with the uh, trade on uh, the models of cameras. Now, uh, my camera gets uh, such a color, your camera may get another color. In uh, preparing for the implementation of the provisions, um, uh, what have you done? Can you be more specific? What um, equipment will you use as said by Mr. Yik? As, and also, in terms of enforcing the law, how many enforcement officers uh, will be involved? Uh, if one has to hold up, hold, hold out the Ringelman chart and observe the smoke, would there be another one who is uh, doing the um, filming? As for um, law enforcement. Um, we trust the law enforcement officers. They have been trained. They understand the law, and they also understand the procedures. 
as for taking pictures or filming. Um, they are just a kind of assisting um, the provision of evidence. Mr. Yig is right. Um, different equipment, um, shooting by different equipment or shooting from different angles may lead to variations in the uh, tone of the color. But the variation uh, is very small. And also the evidence given by the laws, law enforcement officer is primary. Unless uh, the color shown in the picture is substantially different uh, from uh, the evidence of the officer, then, then we'll have to uh, consider it uh, rather carefully. And then we may uh, have to think twice before we decide on prosecution. As for manpower, there will be adequate manpower to do the enforcement. Our patrolling officers are not just uh, patrolling for spotting uh, smoky vessels. They have other daily tasks. They will also pay attention to smoky vessels. Uh, we have adequate manpower to enforce the law. With regard to dark smoke, uh, in our harbor, the situation has substantially improved. Mr. Ho also mentioned earlier, when we inspect the vessels, we have adopted um, the standard of shade 2 on the Ringelman chart in assessing the emission of the vessels. And during the inspection, if we discover uh, this problem, then we will ask um, the um, people in the trade to um, do the necessary rectification in, our, um, uh, in terms of um, identifying uh, breaches. It is just uh, the number of breaches is just in single digit. I hope, uh, Ms. Yik, I hope that the director will talk to the trade and agreed on the models of cameras to be used and that will avoid controversies. Uh, in fact, it's also mentioned in para 5 of the paper. The situation has substantially increased. In 2012, it is just 1.2 percent, and that is substantial improvement. As for communication, uh, let the administration to have a second chance. When you amend the, uh, when you uh, propose, the, before you propose amendments, have you discuss with the technical people in the trade and have they raised any concerns? In our discussion with the trade, they fully understand the content of the amendment and also the standard. As for uh, members' uh, comments, I, would, uh, uh, I will inform the uh, trade that we will use uh, what models of cameras that we will use, but they are just assisting um, the uh, production of evidence. Um, the primary uh, evidence is the uh, statement of the law enforcement officers and also the um, um, verbal statement of the officers in court. Do members want to invite deputations to uh, come forward to give their views? Uh, what, Mrs. Sin? Let us do it by uh, written uh, invitation. Uh, we can give them an open end a reply. Whether they want to come before us, we can ask them to write in. But if they are willing to come before us pers uh, in person, then uh, they can come. Well, I, I think we can try it out, see if they um, want to make any written submission first. If members feel that certain bodies, groups may be interested and want to express their views, then please give us uh, the uh, a list or also the person's concern so that the secretary can follow the, that the clerk can follow the matter up. Well, uh, I asked the administration to gather information from 
major ports, major ports in the world, ports in urbanized um, uh, communities. Say, even you use the Ringelmann chart, have they uh, say uh, say digitize the Ringelmann chart when they shoot a picture, they can already. Uh, rate it on the Ringelmann chart uh, through some electronic means. Even if they use the Ringelmann chart, uh, do they also use it in tandem with certain new technology, um, the uh, major ports, uh, which are big cities too? Do members have other questions on the policy aspect? If not, then I think the um, administration has got the members' uh, point. If members don't have further queries, then let us move on to uh, the text of the amendment bill. The legal advisor. Um, we are looking at the long title. If members may refer to 611, uh, bracket 02 paper. Um, that uh, the paper um, is um, the um, the paper contains the question we put to the administration. We've noticed that in the long title is said that the bill seeks to amend the shipping and port control ordinance and the merchant shipping local ordinance to enhance the control of emission of dark smoke from vessels in the waters of Hong Kong. But if we look at the bill. The blue bill. Um, the administration uh, used the, um, the the administration uh, changed the basis of conviction from nuisance to a certain uh, shade on the Ringelman chart. Now, if there is dark smoke emission, which is um, not, which is below. Um, Shade two of the Ringelman chart, but it still cause a nuisance in terms of odor or in terms of other aspects. It's still a nuisance, though it doesn't breach the Ringelman chart shade two. Now, after the amendment bill is passed, how is this situation addressed? The administration can still enhance the control of emission of dark smoke from vessels. Uh, Ms. Chen. In our reply, we have already reiterated uh, this point. Whether it's this existing law or the um, amendment, we target at black smoke. And you can uh, look at the definition of uh, smoke. Um, uh, smoke uh, includes ashes, uh, so on and so forth. Um, it is the result of incomplete combustion causing dark smoke, causing nuisance. Whether it is the existing provision or the future new provision, they are to deal with dark smoke. So there is no change, basically, in uh, the purpose of the law. What is changed? Is that we want to rely on an objective standard to enhance the um, enforcement of the law? Yes, if I may reply. Under um, existing definition, uh, dark smoke. Uh, the definition of smoke is rather broad. It includes soot, ash, grit, so on and so forth. Unlike what is said in the bill, which defines it as dark smoke. Um, which is equivalent to or above shade two of the Ringelman Ringelman chart. Um, the old definition is not just based on color, and it can deal with um, um, more aspects than the proposed amendment. Going back to the issue of dark smoke, if it is below shade two but is still a nuisance, how can you deal with that? Under the existing law, there are many ways to deal with the nuisance, uh, but 
under the new provision, you can only deal with the color and nothing else. Uh, Ms. Chen, concerning the point raised by the legal advisor, her understanding is correct because the present provision doesn't mention color. The purpose of the law and people's complaint are targeting uh, dark smoke. And therefore, we provide a clear definition of dark smoke is in line with implementing our target, uh, um, uh, our policy target or policy objective. It's right for the legal advisor to say the nuisance is very broad, uh, but it's too broad. It's not objective, and therefore there are difficulties of adducing evidence. Uh, we now try to narrow down. Uh, the scope so as to enable people to make complaints to the um, marine department, the CCR to enforce the law. So is there are merits. You don't look at uh, you only look at the color, and you don't care about odor, right? Uh, with regard to nuisance, uh, the smoke may not be black, may not be dark by our observation, but it's really smelly. Then, after the amendment of the law, you can't do anything about this. Is it correct? Uh, according to our law enforcement experience over the years, we only received complaints of dark smoke, and yet we couldn't follow up. The complainants were not able to uh, spell out what sort of nuisance caused on them. Say when we saw dark smoke, say um, um, the uh, office buildings uh, over overlooking the um, harbor, the people working inside there saw dark smoke in the harbor. Um, there was no nuisance caused, uh, but uh, we could, uh, uh, but we couldn't do anything uh, despite the dark smoke. Now we did see dark smoke, though substantially. Uh, that the incidents uh, have declined substantially. Say I, I said earlier, single digits uh, say in sing uh, bridges, uh, breaches in single digit. Since uh, there was no nuisance, uh, we couldn't do anything. We could only liaise with the vessels that uh, something happened uh, to your vessel, and uh, you you better pay attention to the emission. So in reality, when we rely on such objective criteria, we believe that it will help substantially in our enforcement work. This is why we have drafted the bill in such a way. Mr. Ip? So nuisance could be smell or also the ashes. Unless you don't burn fuel, there is always smell. So the dark smoke is unburnt carbon and it becomes ashes. And today we no longer see such things. I agree that we should have objective standards. If it is indeed related to ashes or grits, they will be reflected in the dark smoke. Any other follow-ups? Perhaps you can refer to the documents involving the questions posed by our legal advisor. Can we move on to clause by clause examination? Yes. Other than the blue bill, I will also use the marked up copy. CB bracket 4, 611 slash 13 to 14 bracket 01. Chen? Page 1. We would like to add two 
new parts to section 49, the interpretation. The definition of dark smoke, which means smoke that would appear to be as dark as or darker than shade 2 on a specified Ringelmann chart. Any questions? No. Please continue. Page 2. First of all, the heading of section 50. We are adding dark before the word smoke. Bracket 1. No vessel in the waters of Hong Kong shall emit dark smoke for three minutes or more continuously at any one time. Bracket 2. It is just along the same definition. Emission of dark smoke in circumstances affecting safety or life or of the vessel is not an offence. Bracket 3 is amended to specify that the owner or and master of the vessel and the owner's agent each commits an offence and the penalty is a fine level of level 4 for first offence and then level 5 for subsequent offences. In bracket 3, owner and master of the vessel and the owner's agent each commits an offence. If there is emission of dark smoke for three minutes or more continuously at any one time. If you look at the um, air quality ordinance, it seems that there is a discrepancy concerning where the line is drawn. I would like to ask you, how do you look at this? Ms Chen? Yes, we are aware of such a discrepancy or such a difference. The air pollution ordinance actually targets vehicles on the land. They also use shade 3 on the chart. When it comes to vehicles and vessels in terms of the structures and operations, they're very different. So we agreed that there could be two sets of standards. For our set of standard, we have referred to overseas practice, which is shade 2 on Ringelman chart. I'm just worried about any potential conflict in court in the future. If that is not a problem, then it should be fine. We also need to look at the objective, the long title, short title, scope of application. It could be related to the air, but we're talking about different means of transportation and different technologies used, different sampling. So we may not be comparing similar things. Mr. Sinchong Kai also asked about international practices. So concerning the three-minute threshold, is it being adopted around the world? Is it the most common standard? Our MD staff has conducted some communication with overseas ports in the UK and in the US. We receive response from one port each concerning the use of Ringelman chart and also threshold three minutes. Concerning page two of the marked up copy, section 50. Any other amendments? Any other questions? If not, let's move on. Page three is for merchant shipping low vessels ordinance. Similarly, in the interpretation, we are adding the definitions of dark smoke and specified chart. The last one was shipping and port control ordinances regulating non-local vessels. This is for local vessels. This is a very similar amendment.
Mr. Hope, you previously for um, Section 50, after the owner and master of the vessel, you are adding and the owner's agent each commits an offence. I would like to understand what the content is. This agent may not know about the structure of the vessel. He may be simply told to manipulate the vessel and he doesn't own the vessel. For CAP 313, they regulate ocean-going vessels coming to Hong Kong. So concerning the penalties, they apply to the owner who may be located uh, in some overseas places and we can sue the master of the vessel or the owner's agent instead. You see it? And the owner's agent. So are we talking about suing both people? Yes. So the fine level will apply twice. So it is done at the same time? Yes. Because the spirit is the owner of the vessel is responsible for proper maintenance of the machines and the master of the vessel is responsible for manipulation of the vessel. We're doing something similar compared to overseas countries. And in this case, it may also be the owner's agent. So no more questions for 50. We'll move on to page 3 interpretation. Any questions? The time of enactment. Do you have a time for the specified chart? Commencement date. It has not been fixed yet. That means the date of Gazetto. All right, understood. Let's move on. Page four. Page four of marked copy. Section fifty-one. The heading: emission of dark smoke instead of smoke. In bracket one, we are specifying dark smoke for three minutes or more continuously at any one time is not permitted. Bracket 2, again clerical amendment. Subsection 1 may not apply to the emission of dark smoke in circumstances affecting the safety of life or of the vessel. Bracket 3, we are taking away the existing penalty, we are adding bracket 4, which is the same as the status quo. Level 3, 10,000. Uh, level 4, so on and so forth. These are for local vessels. Level 4, 25,000 penalty. So members should understand that there are differences concerning how ocean-going vessels and local vessels are treated. Our legal advisor has already asked the administration why is there such a two-tier system? Shouldn't we treat them equally and impose the same level of penalties? We would like to target problems caused by emission of dark smoke. Local and non-local vessels or ocean-going vessels are different objectively. The ocean-going vessels have greater power of their engines and therefore the level of smoke emission may be more serious and therefore the 
court can examine different cases and it may have discretion concerning different levels of penalties. Mr. Ip, this is related to our discussion earlier. 51 bracket 3, you are deleting the original part suggesting that the owner or the ship manager will be sued at the same time. Is that right? That is what I see from the text, which is the same as the treatment for ocean-going vessels. Is it possible that um, ferry services provider may become liable and will be fined? And perhaps the captain will say that I'm just being told to operate the vessel and you should prosecute the boss behind me instead. Whether a person has been ordered to do certain things. I think that the captain of the vessel should understand that if there is smoke coming out of the vessel, he must know that he is violating the law and he therefore should address the problem together with the owner of the vessel. If he continues to operate the vessel in the sea, he is committing a crime. Other than the captain, the owner of the vessel is also responsible. So both people will be prosecuted. I'm not sure. I have to ask my staff and see what they think. When it comes to poor maintenance and repair, there will be dark smoke emitted right away when it's being operated and of course no one should manipulate such a vessel at the time. But sometimes it's a different scenario. Sometimes there would be dark smoke continuously for a certain duration, but it doesn't start when the engine is operated. Sometimes the captain may not foresee this, or this is not his intention. How do you resolve this conflict? Well, allow me to reiterate. If he knows something is wrong, he must take action. I don't know what the vessel is. I don't know how it's being handled, but I think this is between the owner of the vessel and also the captain of the vessel or the master of the vessel. We are just setting objective standards for operators on a vessel to encourage them to follow the law. We understand this may be more related to repair maintenance of a vessel and therefore the owner of the vessel will be prosecuted if there is an offence. And sometimes it may only involve the behaviour of the master of a vessel and we will only prosecute the master of the vessel. In uh, this bill, uh, we have not changed the policy. In the past, we did prosecute both the owner and the coxswain. Mr. Yick, I think your concern is this. The owner should have a heavier responsibility uh, in comparison with the coxswain. The coxswain is just an employee. Why should the coxswain be prosecuted as well? The administration explained that that is the uh, existing arrangement under the law. I think Mr. Ye can help us out by uh, finding out uh, what the views of the people in the trade are. Concerning page 4 of the markup copy, do members have any que questions? If not, then uh, Ms. Chen, please uh, move on to page 5. 
In page five, we propose to add a new 51A. Um, the purpose of this section is this. When a law enforcement officer observes uh, that there is a smoky vessel, then he may consider uh, starting a prosecution, and um, the owner should or the coxswain should start uh, maintain the vessel, and the um, officer can ask or the marine department can ask the coxswain owner to um, bring the vessel back to uh, for further inspection. With regard to the new 51A inspection local vessel emitting dark smoke, do members have any questions? Any questions? The new 51A. Any questions? If not, then. We have already gone over the Chinese version of the text. Um, there is a question in respect of the term Gao Fu or deliver. Um, I think uh, there should be a, a discussion on that. Um, yes, Miss Chuck. Concerning uh, the term Gao Fu in Chinese or deliver in English, um, this is um, this means a handing over. According to a Chinese dictionary, it is uh, to bring and hand over. Deliver, according to the concise Oxford Dictionary, deliver is to bring and hand over. So, in Chinese, it is a gao fu. What is the, in fact, what is the um, act, uh, act with regard to deliver? We liaise with the owner uh, within a specified time. The vessel uh, will be uh, handed over uh, to us. At a place where we did uh, the ins where we do the inspection, and if it's uh, th th so, the purpose is just for inspection. Yes, indeed, we just want to make sure uh, that they have already rectified the situation, and there is no more emission of dark smoke. So, at a definite, uh, at a specified place, um, at specified time, they have to. Um, Allowed you to conduct an inspection, a term you should use quite often in the mainland. Concerning 51A, uh, we also have another question. The requirement is only applicable to local vessels. There is no such requirement on the OGVs. The administration's reply is that they do have engineers on board. Um, and um, they will be able to um, repair the OGV, and therefore there is no need uh, to hand over or deliver the vessel for inspection. Will the administration further explain that why the presence of an, a qualified engineer uh, will be able to do everything right, and there is no need for further inspection? Mr. Chong, with regard to OGVs, the manning uh, requirement is uh, subject to regulation of the relevant laws of uh, the uh, uh, country. They ha they have uh, engineers, qualified engineers, um, doing different tasks. Uh, the engineers are trained professionally with regard to dark smoke. According to um, our experience, these engineers are able to rectify the situation very quickly. They are able to take immediate action to take uh, to rectify the problem. May I uh, give you um, an example? Say if there is an uh, ocean going vessel, uh, it may have um, three uh, generators, 
and when it enters our harbor, it just use one generator, and if the generator is uh, emitting dark smoke, then um, the engineer can switch to a second generator, and that will improve the situation and time. There is time to repair the uh, first uh, generator, which is faulty. As for local vessels, uh, the situation is very different, and the requirement for engineers, uh, for engineers, um, or f requirements for an engineer are less, and they don't have uh, backup facilities to uh, stop the emission of dark smoke. Therefore, we have such a requirement on local vessels. Uh, can the administration further up? Uh, f further uh, confirm that if the engineers do not uh, conduct any uh, rectification measures, then do you require the, them to hand over the vessel for inspection? According to our experience in law enforcement, we have not encountered such a situation. Within a reasonable period of time, if they are not able to rectify the situation, we will prosecute them on a second offense. According to uh, the actual situation, we believe we don't need such powers in dealing with the OGVs. There are different treatments with regard to local vessels and OGVs under the existing law, and uh, with regard to the present amendment, uh, there is no um, requirement, uh, uh, no proposal on the part of, uh, no proposal by the administration to change the present arrangement. With a completed clause by clause study of the bill in Chinese, as for the English version, I think the legal adviser will follow the matter up. And um, and then uh, we will um, inform members in writing if there is any um, question. Do members have any uh, questions uh, in respect of the text of the bill? Okay, let me conclude uh, that um, members are. Um, Concerned about uh, the technology adopted by big ports in major ports in other parts of the world, and they will hope the administration can collect more information. Um, members also um, members also want to know more concerning law enforcement procedures and also the equipment and manpower uh, that will be adopted. And third, concerning um, owners and coxswains. Um, um, do they have any different view uh, with regard to the um, the, uh, the administration's proposal? Though this is a, um, an existing arrangement, uh, we we'll also want to find out whether people in the trade still want to um, provide their views in writing, or may even seek to appear before us and make some uh, verbal comments. On the bill, we'll ask the clerk to liaise with you concerning the text of the bill. Uh, our legal adviser will follow the matter up. If I miss anything, yes, Mr. Yik. Uh, going back to your point, I will talk to the trade uh, on the po on this point. Now you sue both the owner and the coxswain. The coxswain is uh, just an employee. Um, if the uh, coxswain say, uh, says that I see the vessel is emitting smoke, I, I refuse to um, um, drive that um, uh, ferry, and then uh, that will affect public service. And you may say that uh, the uh, coxswain and the owner can agree that the owner will take all the responsibility. Well, I, I really want to find out what is the arrangement. I have to come back on this. So if you have to come back, then uh, we'll have a second meeting. In fact, uh, I thank the clerk for uh, marking out a time slot. 
and that is the 19th of May, 4.30. We'll have a second meeting. Well, I have no strong objection. Today is the 29th, and there are only three weeks to go. We don't need uh, to have a um, another meeting so soon. They need time to collect information, and we also need to uh, invite um, members of the public to give their views. I want to collect all the views first, and then the administration uh, will respond to those views, and then we have the second meeting. Otherwise, our next meeting may not be very effective. Okay. Originally, we've scheduled um, the next meeting. Um, now, after the first meeting today, will the administration agree with Mr. Sin uh, that we uh, will have a meeting sometime later than the 19th of May? Uh, that is no urgency uh, for the commencement of the bill. But we have to take into account that we do have a summer recess. Maybe we can defer the meeting uh, by one or two weeks. Is it okay with the administration? Okay, very good. So uh, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you very much.